Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to the Diabetic Retinopathy series. In the third video on this series, we are studying the clinical findings which are seen in the Diabetic Retinopathy. So without any delay, let's get started. The first finding which is the most common finding is the presence of microaneurysms. The microaneurysms, they occur first. They are the first ophthalmoscopically detectable signs of diabetic retinopathy. They will actually appear as small red dots. And microaneurysms are usually about 12 to 100 micrometers in size. And those which are about 30 micrometers or greater than 30 micrometers will be visible ophthalmoscopically. As you can see over here, this is a very tiny red spot seen and that is, is the uh, microaneurysm and that is enlarged in this inset. Now, sometimes you might get confused between the microaneurysm and hemorrhages, but hemorrhages are usually larger than the microaneurysms and they are about more than 125 micrometers, whereas microaneurysms are at most about 100 micrometers and not above them. And this was given by the early treatment of diabetic retinopathy study. Now, what do you see? Uh, microaneurysm as on fundus floris and angiography. On fundus floris and angiography, the microaneurysm will appear as tiny hyperfluorescent dots. Typically, they are more numerous than what we see clinically. And one important point which you must remember uh, about FFA in microaneurysm is that they will remain hyperfluorescent without any change in size. So just have a look in this picture and you can see these white color or hyperfluorescent dots and these dots are nothing but microaneurysms and they are going to remain like that throughout uh, the you know, FFA and they will not fade. Okay, so this is the microaneurysms on FFA. Similarly, on this picture, you can see certain tiny red dots and these tiny red dots actually represents the microaneurysms. Coming to the next clinical finding or the fundus finding that we see in diabetic retinopathy is the presence of retinal hemorrhages. So retinal hemorrhage is nothing but bleeding within the layers of retina. Now based on where they are present, it is of two types, the superficial hemorrhages and the deep hemorrhages. The superficial hemorrhages are the hemorrhages which are actually present in the nerve fiber layer. Now because of the tighter organization of the cells and the very limited extracellular space which is present around the nerve fiber layer and the fibers of the nerve fiber layer, it leads to the blood to follow the con a specific configuration of the axons, right? And that is the reason we have feathery or flame-shaped hemorrhages in case of superficial hemorrhage. So what I mean to say is whenever you see a hemorrhage which is flame-shaped or feathery shape, that is a superficial hemorrhage and it is present within the nerve fiber layer. Coming to the deep hemorrhages, the deep hemorrhages are actually present within the outer plexiform layer or the inner nuclear layer and because of the uh, compact middle layers of the retina, they will not take the configuration of the axons and they will rather be a blot shape or dot or blot hemorrhages. So let us uh, have a look at these hemorrhages in these pictures. So this is the first picture and over here you can see the configuration of the hemorrhage here. And these hemorrhages are actually the, uh, you can see here, this is a one hemorrhage, uh, long hemorrhages. And these are called the flame shape hemorrhages and they are much superficial hemorrhages present in the nerve fiber layer. However, have a look at these hemorrhages present over here. And these are much, uh, they're actually hemorrhages as if you drop an ink on a paper and the how the ink is going to spread. So that is called an ink blot. Similarly, these are dot and blot hemorrhages. Okay, so it could be in the form of a dot or it could be uh, looking like a blot. And these are deep, deep hemorrhages, also called the dot blot hemorrhages. Similarly over here just have a look at this reddish area. So we have these are the dot blot hemorrhages which are deep hemorrhages and at the same time we have certain flame shaped superficial oblong hemorrhages also in the picture. Coming to the third clinical feature or the fundus finding which is present in diabetic retinopathy is the presence of hard exudate. Now I have already done a video dedicated on the hard exudate which is present on my channel. So hard exudates are yellowish and they are well circumscribed accumulations which are present deeper to the retinal vessel. 
in the outer plexiform nerve fiber uh, outer plexiform nerve fiber layer okay now the heart exudates are actually nothing but whenever a vessel will have increased permeability that vessel is going to leak a lot of fluid and that fluid will basically be exudative in nature and as the fluid recedes it will leave the lipids and lipoproteins uh, in the layer and th those lipids and lipoproteins will look yellowish in color and will appear as the hard exudates okay and uh, Hard exudates can be actually present anywhere in the retina but they they are actually found in the macula and whenever they are found in macula uh, specifically they can lead to diabetic macular edema okay Next. so this is the uh, this is the thumbnail of the video which is present on the channel about hard exudates so uh, in that video i have told you about other conditions in which hard exudate can present apart from diabetic retinopathy now hard exudates can actually take uh, basically two types of retinal distribution okay so they can be distributed in the retina in two ways either they can be arranged in a circinate pattern or a macular star pattern so what is meant by this circinate pattern arrangement in circinate pattern a complete or a partial circle separated from the leaking vessel by a clear zone so there will be a vessel which is leaking say a microaneurysm like this and then there will be a clear zone and then you are going to see a circle of hard exudates around that uh, leaking vessel so this is called circinate arrangement in macular star formation the lipid is going to actually arrange radially surrounding the macula or the leaking area like this okay so as they are arranged uh, radially within that henley's layer it is actually uh, it looks like a star and therefore it is called macular star formation so just have a look over here in this first picture this is the circinate arrangement of the exudate so you can see there's a leaking vessel present in the center and then there's a clear zone and then the exudates are arranged surrounding to that so it's called circinate retinopathy and over here you can see the arrangement of the exudates in henley's layer in the macula in the form of a star configuration and this is called the macular star configuration now another clinical finding uh, which is present in diabetic retinopathy is the presence of cotton wool spot also called soft exudate also called cytoid bodies or the nerve infarcts so these are actually white fluffy patches that you see present within the nerve fiber layer of the retina and typically they are actually uh, they are understood to be a micro infarct within the nerve fiber layer especially which happens secondary to ischemic uh, insult of the retina okay now cotton wool spots are more common in the posterior pole where the nerve uh, fiber layer is actually thicker and they will however become smaller and more circumscribed with time and they might actually get absorbed completely after about six to eight, eight weeks time so that is very important fact about the cotton wool spot so if you have to remember few points about the cotton wool spots cotton wool spots are infarcts which are present within the nerve fiber layer and which occur secondary to the ischemic insult of the retina they are white fluffy patches and they are present more in the posterior pole and however they can get absorbed completely with time and it takes about six to eight weeks for a cotton wool spot to disappear so this is a thumbnail of a video which is present on the channel already about the cotton wool spot in the hyperpigmented lesions in the retina series in which i have explained uh, numerous other conditions in which cotton wool spots can be present apart from the diabetic retinopathy now another clinical finding which is very common in diabetic retinopathy is the presence of venous beading and venous looping now all this actually happens because of the extensive ischemia of the retina because of which uh, i have already told you that there is pericyte loss and the vessel wall will get uh, weakened because of which we can have saccular bulges within the wall of the vein and because of the saccular bulges within the wall of the vein the it will look as if beads are present on that vein and this is called venous beading so it is very frequently seen adjacent to the areas of capillary non-perfusion and they indicate that there is increasing retinal ischemia and can, uh, can also be a significant predictor for progression to proliferative diabetic retinopathy 
The other clinical finding is the presence of IRMA, that is intraretinal microvascular abnormality. I have already explained uh, to you about the IRMAs in my video on IRMA and neovascularization. Now, one point which I forgot to tell you about IRMA in that video is that IRMAs are actually running from arterioles to venules and one important point is that they never cross the major blood vessels. They are always present within the two major blood vessels and they are never going to actually cross over them. Okay, they are present in between. Now, uh, yeah, F on FFA, the IRMAs will don't uh, will usually not leak, and they are often found on the borders of non-perfuse retina. So again, in this picture, you can see that there the IRMAs are actually present within the two major vessels, connecting them as shunts. However, these IRMAs will never cross the major vessels. So again, this picture here is actually showing that presence of venous bleeding. You can see the vessel wall is actually very irregular and this is known as venous bleeding. And so similarly here, here, here is the vascular network which is representing the IRMAs or the intraretinal microvascular abnormalities. So this is the video on NBE versus IRMA on the channel. Now, another last or uh, another uh, clinical finding which can be seen in diabetic retinopathy is the presence of diabetic papillopathy. Okay, so diabetic papillopathy is considered to be a complication of diabetes mellitus and it is characterized by the optic disc swelling and edema of the optic nerve head. Okay, so currently it is said that uh, for diagnosis of the diabetic papillopathy, the presence of diabetes mellitus is one factor, second optic disc edema and third is despite having optic disc edema, there will only be mild optic nerve dysfunction. So a patient uh, with diabetic, if he's presenting with unilateral or bilateral disc edema, diabetic papillopathy should be on your um, differentials, especially when you want to differentiate it from AION because that can also present as disc edema. However, in AION, the optic nerve dysfunction will be severe, but in diabetic papillopathy, the optic nerve dysfunction will usually be much more milder when you compare it with the disc edema. Okay. So, uh, as you can see in this picture, there's a lot of disc edema which is present here. Similarly, it'll, uh, in this picture also, you can see the margins of the disc are blurred. You cannot really make out the disc margin and this represents the diabetic papillopathy.